Hi guys, it's Jamie and um, today I'm going to show you some oval bowls. We did this in our class just recently and so I'm going to show you some variations. Um, so this is my small little one. This is like the one of the first ones I did. Anyway, um, they've progressed as I've gone along. Um, it used to be just without the handles. I've added handles. Um, and then um, with this one, I actually cut off some of the edge too to give you more room you know, for lifting. All right, so let's go. First, I rolled a slab appropriate to the size mold I was using. Um, in this case, um, I, this is about 11 and a half. So all I did is I took my mold and I measured and then created a slab that was big enough for that. Um, then I'm gonna go through and smooth this out. And I'm going to apply this texture. So this is a paint roller that I got. It was really spongy. So I ended up filling it with plaster and now it's perfect. So this is a really nice texture. What I like about this is you don't really see the lines. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drape it over this mold. And this is different than what I do in my chunky bowls video. Um, for one, this is a thinner slab. It's about a quarter of an inch. Um, probably a little bit bigger than a quarter of an inch because I knew I was going to roll texture into it deeply. And so now I'm just going to um, continue pressing down in a circular fashion, you know, in this banding wheel until I feel like the clay is on the mold completely and all the way down. And as you do this, you're going to develop wrinkles and, um, well, the goal is to not have wrinkles. <laughs> so you're going to have to lift as you go at a certain point. And then when you feel like you've gotten there, um, go ahead and remove the excess clay. And um, this is the one time I say you can use a needle tool with molds. I don't like poking into it, but I'm just going to run the flat part against the bottom of the mold. So I'm just going to rotate around. And note, not all of my um, mold is completely, uh, the clay is not completely down on the mold yet. I will address that in a moment. So now that I got this big, chunky, heavy stuff off, um, I'm, I'm going to do a quick inspection. I want to make sure I don't have any plaster on my pieces of clay. So I put this in and I recycle and use. All right, so now I have a little bit of flare up. I'm just going to go around again and press everything in. Then once I've done that, I'm gonna go around with my needle tool again. So I'm gonna let this set up for about a half an hour, maybe 45 minutes to an hour, um, just depending on the weather. And um, it should, it, since I didn't press into the mold, I just draped, it should be pretty easy to remove. Um, so in some cases, you could actually add cheesecloth to the top of your mold if you want, or take a um, piece of single ply tissue to put under here to help with removal. But since I didn't do any pressing, I think it's going to be an easy lift off. So back in a few minutes. Hey, I'm back and um, I have my mold set up a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and just lift it off my form. And um, so this is my mold and it's sitting on top of a cutter <laughs> just to give me that lift on the banding wheel. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that, remove the mold. And the next thing I'm going to do is actually press in my uh, mold. I'm going to oval it. So I'm bringing it up the sides like this to what I think might be equal. Um, and then I'm going to flip it. And before I cut it, I'm going to secure the ends. You could use a wad of clay, but I like using these little marshmallowy things um, from Michael's. I'm going to put one on each side. They're equal size. And that's going to help um, keep it steady when I do the cutting. So the next thing I'm going to do is create a line of where to cut. 
So I know I want to start at this edge and then come across to this edge. To keep it steady, um, I'm going to create, or I found a block of wood in my studio that's about the right size. And so I'm just going to hold my needle tool with the block of wood and drag it across. And that's creating a line. So I'm going to come over here and do the same thing. Alright, now that I got my lines, I'm going to go ahead and just do it again a little bit deeper. And I'm not going to remove it. I want to keep it in place to support this. So this is probably coming off the mold a little too soon. So I'm also going to tap down a little bit to create more of a flat bottom. And um, if your clay is flopping a lot, you could just let it set up again and maybe get some blocks to help with the sides and then come back when it feels like it's a little bit more secure. Um, so at this point, what I would do then is now start working on these sides. And I would take this tool here and uh, perhaps cut down somewhere I feel like it's too high. Like I feel like this edge is a little too high. And the other way that I would work with the edge is to use a metal tool. And this I'm going to use to cut away that lifted part that came up. So um, on the inside I kind of I go downward motion and then on the outside I come up because I don't want to ruin the design. Now it's a process of um, just fooling with the edge and this one is a little bit wet so um, I'm going to work on the edges when it's set up a little bit more. So I have another one that's been setting up here um, and I think that one's ready so I'm going to swap this out. And here I have another one that's much more firm. This is actually true leather hard. And so um, I'm just going to finish working on um, the rim. And then um, I like to use a soft rib to push everything back down. And lastly, I just use my fingers with water to go and soften those edges. So now I have an oval vessel and um, I could just leave it like this or I could um, actually add the handles. So let me show you how I make my handles. So I have a long strip here and I'm going to roll my texture on it. Then I'm going to use a ruler. I'm using this one strip for two handles, so it's a little bit longer. Um, probably I would go for like seven inches or six inches at least for um, the handles, but it's uh, better to trim away what you don't want than be short. <laughs> so I'm going long. Um, next thing I'm going to do is just crimp, and I'm going to just push in with that ruler on the side. I'm just going to run the needle tool down where I crimped. push in. I like how this frames the handle. And then I'm just going to run a sponge to smooth it out. And also to take away some of that texture. And then finally, I'm just going to put it in a horseshoe and cut. I'm putting them side by side just for comparison and I'm just going to make them equal now, equal lengths. And this is probably going to get trimmed back even more, but what I would do is just have it hang out like this until firm enough to attach. So I actually have some that are ready to go and I'll put these over to the side. So these ones, um, I cut this at an angle. What I did is I, I put it up to the spot where I wanted it. And 
placement, I just look down and I decide, you know, what looks good. <laughs> and in this case, it's just about, uh, I don't know, about an inch from the edge. So I have that and then I cut it I, and then I cut the side and then I set it back down and I put the other one next to it and then I just cut it the same length to, so that they'll be the same size. So now um, this is where these guys are going to go and I'm just putting them on here and I'm looking at them to make sure that they look like they're both in the right spot. Okay, so my other camera died on me, so I'm finishing out this video with another setup. Anyhow, I put the handles on with slip, and now I'm just going to add some additional clay to secure the handles under here, and then clean up with a brush. So a final variation is going to be to put a scoop in here before doing any other um, handle additions. So what I'm going to do here is find a cutter that would be the kind of opening that I want. Um, Alright, so now I have my, my <laughs> place where now I put a handle across and now I have a little bit more opening. So I might have a lower handle on this one. Anyways, I just wanted to show you that last little variation. This is the pot I was showing you before that needs a little bit more work on the rim. Um, but I'm going to show you an edit here. So all I'm doing is I'm taking the pot and then I'm going to cut a V into one side of it. And then um, it's still fairly wet. But I'm going to put some scoring marks in here anyway. And the reason for this V is to bring up this back end a little bit. So it's a dart. And um, you can guess what's happening here. I'm going to start pushing in here. And now it's turning into a gravy boat. So I still have some work to do on the rim. I, I need to let it set up. Um, but you can see with the shape where it's going, I would just need to add a base. And what you could do with the base is you could do the same oval um, project on a smaller form like this to create that base. So for example, here is a tiny form that I ovaled. And this could very well become the base of that pot, if I want. I'm still deciding. Um, another thing is, this is another version of this that I was doing earlier. It's set up more, handles easily. Is I didn't like the straight line around here. So when this firms up, I'll probably do the same thing I did to this one. So I'll take a sure form and I will just start, you know, cutting into the edges to give it more of a wave. So now all I need to continue uh, to finish this is to put a handle on it and a base. So this can come down here, and then I can take a handle. This one's not ready yet, obviously, and put it on here, just in time for Thanksgiving. Anyway, um, these are kind of fun bowls to try. I hope you explore and try them out. Um, let me know if you have any questions, and that's it. Have fun. See you next time.